evaluate the following integral, where r is bounded by x equals 1, y equals 2x plus 4, and y equals minus x minus 2. And we're given this double integral over this two-dimensional region r of y squared dA. So the first thing that we need to do is sketch this region to determine the bounds. So we want to sketch r in the plane. And let's think about what we're given here. We have a vertical line at x equals 1. And then we have two diagonal lines. So our first line is y is equal to 2x plus 4. And then we have y is equal to minus x minus 2. So when you're determining the bounds like this, there's two things that we want to keep in mind. The first thing that we want to keep in mind is what's going to be the y value when x is 1. So, plugging 1 into each of our functions, we have y is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 plus 4, which gives us 6. So we have some intersection point here at 1, 6. And then we also have y is equal to minus 1 minus 2, which gives us negative 3. So we have another intersection point at 1 minus 3. So we'll keep these guys in mind as we proceed. Now the other thing that we want to be thinking about is where did the two lines intersect? Meaning these two lines. So we want to know where do the two diagonal lines intersect? Well, since we know of course that y is equal to y, we can equate these curves and solve for x. So I have 2x plus 4 is equal to minus x minus 2, and we can solve for x here. So we end up with minus 3x is equal to, oh, excuse me, not minus 3x, shame on me. That's positive 3x. Positive 3x is equal to minus 6. So they're intersecting when x is equal to negative 2. And we can plug this value into either y to find the y-coordinate of our intersection point. So I have y is equal to, let's say, minus a minus 2, minus 2, which leaves us with 0. So we have a third intersection point here at negative 2, 0. So we're just about ready to go ahead and sketch this line, or sketch this region. So here we go, here is our y-axis, and here is our x-axis. And thinking about these intersection points, we'll do a 2 by 2 scale on y, we'll say there's 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, minus 6, and then I'll do a 1 by 1 scale for x. So there's one, two, three. All right, so let's just simply start by plotting our vertical line. We know we have a vertical line at where x is one. So there we go. And we know we have two intersection points on this line. We have the intersection point at one, six. So that's for that diagonal line, this first one here. And then we also have another intersection point at 1, negative 3. So right about there. And we know that our two curves are intersecting, or these two lines are intersecting at negative 2, 0. All right. So let's, since we're with this green color here, let's think about this first line. And we can see that it has a y-intercept at negative 2. So that's plenty of information to go ahead and sketch this line. So we want it to pass through all three points. And so there it is. This is our first line. That's y is equal to minus x minus 2. And then the other line has a y-intercept at positive 4. Again, if you have graphing paper, it's always going to be easier to sketch these. 
but as long as you're using a scale, you should be all set. So there's our second line. We can now see our bounded region. And so this is y is equal to 2x plus 4. And so the region of integration here is bounded by these three curves. So this is the region R that we are integrating over. So we can see the x bounds here. Right? We know that x varies from negative 2 to 1. And then it's always smart to make sure that you, at some point, you take your pencil and run it over this region to make sure that the top and bottom curves don't change. And they don't here. If we consider an arbitrary x value, we can see that this is always the top bounding curve or the upper bound, and this is always that lower bounding curve. So we can state now our region of integration, the bounds on this region, giving us plenty of room. We have been able to show that R is the set of all points x, y, all the points in the plane, such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2, less than or equal to 1, and that y is greater than or equal to minus x minus 2, less than or equal to 2x plus 4. So here is that region of integration, and we're ready to start integrating. So let's see, we were given that double integral over the region R of y squared dA. So the outer integral is going to be with respect to x from negative 2 to 1. The inner integral is with respect to x. And to make this a little easier on ourselves, notice that our lower bound here has a greatest common factor of minus 1. So we can think about this as minus x plus 2. And with the second upper bound here, it has a greatest common factor of 2. So we can think about that as 2 times x plus 2. So I'm going to write them like this. Our lower bound is minus x plus 2 all the way up to 2 times x plus 2 of y squared. And the order of integration is dy dx. So now we're ready to start evaluating. So let's evaluate the inner integral. So we're integrating first with respect to y. So we have the integral from minus x plus 2 all the way up to 2 times x plus 2 of y squared dy, which gives us y cubed all over 3 from minus x plus 2 to positive 2 times x plus 2. And so I'm going to keep this 1 third out in front. And so we have 2 times x plus 2 cubed. So that leaves us with 8 times x plus 2 cubed. And then we have minus. And when we raise negative 1 to the cube, we're left with a minus 1 multiplied by x plus 2 cubed. So hopefully you're starting to get excited here. We see, hey, we have a negative times a negative. So that becomes positive. But even better than that, we have matching binomials. So all we're left with here is one third, and we're adding up those coefficients. So we have eight plus one, which gives us nine x plus two cubed. And we can simplify. We of course know that three goes into nine three times. So our inner integral simplified is three times x plus two cubed. And now we want to plug this back in so that we can evaluate the outer integral. So our outer integral is now from negative 2 to 1 of 3 multiplied by x plus 2 cubed dx. And fortunately, this is just a general antiderivative. Woohoo! So this becomes 3 multiplied by x plus 2 to the fourth, all over 4, and we can evaluate from negative 2 to 1. So here we go. Keeping 3 fourths on the outside, we have 3 fourths multiplied by 1 plus 2 to the fourth, minus negative 2 plus 2 
to the fourth. So negative 2 plus 2 obviously goes to 0, so that whole piece disappears. We have 1 plus 2 is 3. So we have 3 to the fourth. So this is equal to 3 fourths multiplied by 3 to the fourth gives us 81. And then 81 times 3 leaves us with 243 fourths. And so this is our beautiful final answer.